Welcome. I'm Robert Wainscott from Black Box Analog Design. And uh, typically when I do things like this, I do them as sort of uh, photo essays, but I thought it would be fun uh, to film one because who wants to read anymore? I was contacted by a guy in Florida that told me that he had uh, a mic pre uh, and that it, he had a red-faced uh, mic pre. And I thought to myself, I only ever made one of those, and it was one of the first preamps that I ever sold. And it would be an awful lot of fun to have that back and to go inside and look at the work that I did six years ago. Uh, the sounds and the, the sound shaping that I was looking for back then, uh, you know, I thought was really sellable, was, was really usable. What I suspect in this is that uh, my workmanship isn't going to be uh, quite up to par with uh, what it is today. Uh, I'm not for certain what's inside the box, but um, back at that time, it wasn't uncommon for me to just build things on pieces of copper, um, use little standoffs, glue things directly to the board. Uh, so I expect to see that inside the box. I think it's going to be a lot of fun taking this thing apart and uh, seeing what's inside. And I want to get it back to the uh, to the owner uh, as original as possible. I want to keep it as original as possible, uh, but make it a little bit more functional. So let's dig in. Let's see what we have inside the box. You can just feel how rattly this thing is. I've made some room on my desk, so it's time to get to work. Now, as you can see, this has a red faceplate, and as some of you that have followed my company know, everything I make has black faceplates. So, um, I only experimented with odd colors in the very first few months as I was learning about electronics. So have a little look at this guy. Uh, red faceplate. I can see where I would have added a DI input um, after this uh, faceplate was made for me. Um, I can see some marker where someone has gone through and made markings on where they uh, like the unit. I can also see a little, little bit of damage in the faceplate here. Perhaps that can be bent back out. Um, loose screws, loose faceplate. I can tell you that these, uh, uh, the knobs that are on here uh, were knobs that um, uh, Black Box Analog Design uh, made. We actually molded these knobs ourselves. Uh, back then, I think it would be wise to, to keep them on here. This particular preamp, at least from looking at the faceplate, uh, featured an impedance selection, um, a phantom power. Boy, uh, possibly the ability to turn the triode uh, tube in and out, a DI selector. One of these is probably uh, phase and uh, one of these is probably either an air boost or some kind of boost. We have a, a five position roll off selector. Um, gosh, well, let's see if it even turns on. I see lights. Lights, that's always a good thing. Um, I can see that my one LED lights up, the LEDs in my meter light up, and I think that's a good place uh, to start tearing into it. Hey, it lights up. Well, I've popped the lid off, so let's have a look inside. I can see at this time that I was using, um, and, and are still using, Cinemag uh, input and output transformers. That's a 7C 
Um, it looks like here I'm using the 27101. This is a, uh, uh, a 7 to 1 output transformer uh, that I used to use back then. Since then I've switched to a 4 to 1 for a little bit more gain. Looks like I'm using an Antec toroidal and one of Eric Rossi's very early uh, design power supplies. I was afraid I was going to open this up and there would be a power supply uh, built on a piece of copper. And speaking of copper, have a look at that main circuit board. Um, my intention is to, to keep this board uh, and perhaps update some of the values to make the unit a little more workable, a little more stable. I'm definitely going to have to go in and test the tube and see what's going on there. Um, I'll probably keep everything wired to the faceplate. Back then, uh, all the wiring was um, directly to the faceplate. Uh, today, it's all done uh, with, uh, with a 12 volt voltage controller controlling relays. Um, you can see the meter driver I'm using. Back then it was a JLM Audio. Great company, highly recommended for you DIYers. Um, their little buffer amps uh, to drive meters are, uh, at that time anyways, were a, a real blessing. And I'm, I'm glad that I, that I have it. I don't think this is going to be quite as bad as I thought. Uh, I can definitely neaten up the wiring. I'm, I'm certain I can make the unit more functional. Um, and I can get it back to this guy. Uh, I believe in excellent working condition. All right, the first stop for me is going to be the power supply. And before I measure that, I just want to do a quick inspection. I can see that none of the caps on the supply look blown. Um, the Antec toroidal that I was using back then, this thing could probably power a guitar amp. Matter of fact, I'm certain of it. Um, I was still learning and I tended to uh, very much over engineer the power supply. Uh, this Antec uh, toroidal is powering a single vacuum tube. So um, it has power for days. So there are two voltages I wanna see. I'd like to see if the unit's producing um, uh, 6.3 volts and I can test it here. Yep, still producing 6.3 volts after um, all these years. That's good. Uh, the next thing I want to see is if the unit is producing its um, high voltage. 362 volts. Um, yeah, that's exactly what it's supposed to be producing. So the power supply uh, has held together all these years. That's great. Okay, so I've had an opportunity to study the box and I've uh, come up with a short list of uh, what I believe will take care of its problems. And the first and easiest is going to be structural integrity. Back when I built these things, um, I put them together with tiny little nuts and bolts. Uh, this box is actually, you know, a little six piece unit. And, um, Instead of these nuts and bolts, some of which have fallen out, I'm just going to rivet the box uh, together, and that'll help. Uh, that'll definitely help. Um, I'm going to replace the pots that are in here, all three of them. Right now I have um, a military pot, uh, one from Born, and an alpha pot, and I'm going to replace those with uh, three alpha pots, just so that each pot sort of has the same feel to it. Um, I've decided that I'm going to rework the grounds within the box. Uh, I want to separate um, audio grounds from an LED ground or um, the grounds on the, 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 the meter driver and just so that those are separate. Hopefully that'll quiet things down a little bit. I am going to replace some of the wiring. Back when I made this I believed that shielded wiring inside the box would be a, would be a benefit. Uh, later on I learned that it, it, it seemed to me anyways that shielded wiring added capacitance uh, to what was going on and in a tube circuit would make things just pretty much go uh, crazy. So any shielded wire that I have with inside the box 
I'm going to replace. Um, I've decided I'm going to add a 10 dB pad since this thing was originally built to have one. And uh, I'm just going to put that on a little, uh, a little 12 volt relay, uh, as well as uh, moving my phase switch to the back on a little relay as well. So I can keep things uh, close to the input and do uh, my phantom power, my face switching and things well, right where the signal comes in. And I'll probably glue them to a little, I'll glue some relays to a little uh, board like this and uh, mount that somewhere near the back of the box. I'm also going to replace uh, the DI input. Uh, that's a guitar style input. I'm going to replace it with um, a fully uh, encased uh, DI It'll look neater, uh, probably won't function any different, but if anything, it'll look a little bit neater. There's a couple components I'm going to upgrade. Um, some of the quarter watt resistors are going to be changed to half watt resistors. Some of the half watt resistors change to uh, one watt resistors. I'm going to keep the same values, but I am going to change uh, uh, their wattage value. I'm also going to add a couple resistors for stability. I'm going to put in um, uh, some grid stopper resistors, which this doesn't have, as well as a, uh, a new grid leak resistor there on uh, the triode. And those are, those are the things that I believe are going to make this thing sound absolutely amazing. And gosh, it's been a long day, so I think it's time for you know, a beer and some video games. So until tomorrow. All right, then. I think I've got all the bits and parts I need gathered up and uh, ready to go for this build. During the time lapse uh, parts of this video, I'm going to talk to you through the preamp itself. Right now, I'm chatting with you um, on a blue baby bottle. I guess I could use some fancy microphone, well, if I had one at the moment, uh, but that really wouldn't be fair. Hearing what the preamp sounds like on a $150 microphone, I think, uh, gives you a lot more information. All right, well, while I have the lid, or the faceplate off the unit, I'm going to see if I can uh, touch it up a little bit, perhaps clean it up, maybe put a coat of polyurethane over it to protect uh, the covering that's left. Uh, we'll see how well this thing cleans up. Okay, here's where we're at at the moment. The face plate's drying. I've uh, pulled out the pots that were in there originally. I've taken the meter out. I've removed the uh, um, high pass filter. I'm gonna definitely replace that. I've started uh, tearing into the box and removing components. Um, just I've come to the conclusion some of it's just going to be easier just to run new wire than to keep the existing uh, wiring that's in here. Uh, it'll be faster, and I'm most certain, certainly positive, that I can do it neater. So here's where we're at. Some stuff's drying. Some things have been pulled out. These should be ready to play with soon. Um, as soon as they're dry, I can start wiring those up. This is my new uh, high pass filter that I'm gonna use. I've got my new pots all laid out and ready to go and the parts that I need. I am gonna have to spend a little time uh, trying to match resistors to get uh, some values that I'm looking for, but all in all, everything is going smoothly. All right, so I went ahead and added those grid stop resistors and really just sort of tightened up the, uh, the tube socket, um, put a little shrink wrap um, around some of the parts that didn't have that before and just sort of battle hardened it, uh, getting that ready for what's coming next. As you watch me speed along, we can listen to a different setting. 
Um, this is with a different high pass filter and uh, with the impedance selector uh, in the 50 ohm setting. So I'm just sort of speeding along. It probably hasn't occurred to me yet here in the build that I'm going to be tearing this uh, apart a lot more than I believe I'm going to. Well, we're going to need some twisted wire. And that's how I make my twisted wire. Okay, so I got around to building my phase and 10 dB pad. So let's see if that works. So what I did is I glued some, some relays to a little piece of copper clad board. And I went ahead and wired up that little circuit that you see. It, it looks a mess now, but that's all the wires I would need to make that work. So I've got a pad and I've got a phase switch um, and that's all wired up. So you can see there's my uh, signal going in. Let's turn on the pad. All right, the pad works. That's great. Um, let's see if the phase switch works. We probably won't see it flip phase the way this particular, but I'll Believe it or not, phase works as well. So those two parts of, uh, of the circuit are working. I do know a little bit about the history of this unit. Um, the, the first owner was a gentleman that did work for Turner Broadcasting. Uh, he did his evening spot. So he would be, tonight on whatever, somebody does whatever, watch it. And uh, then the unit was picked up by um, producer engineer Flip Matrix, who uh, recently informed me that he did uh, record uh, Grammy winning artists such as Onyx and Howard Hewitt on the box. So that's a little bit of news I didn't know. Okay, so we're back here at the faceplate. And uh, what I've done is I've taken the, uh, the pad and the phase and I've wired that. Uh, to the face plate. I've added a little bus bar and um, that's going to be holding my 12 volts. So I've got 12 volts of power that can power the relays to um, to my phase uh, switch and uh, to, uh, to my pad. And since I've got 12 volts there, I can use that 12 volts to power the, uh, the LEDs in uh, my meter, uh, the LEDs running the face plate, and the 12 volts that I need to run the meter driver. And uh, so I've got that done. Um, I'm gonna add a, uh, an air switch and a boost switch. It'll, it'll be a, a three position, uh, an on off on switch uh, so that you could have air or you could have a, a, a boost. And um, I'm gonna make that air switch adjustable uh, you, you don't have to take the lid off to do it, but uh, the user will be able to to set sort of whatever um, air uh, feature that they want to have. And you can see some of the other wiring I've got um, done here. I've got the, the input and the DI, that's all ready to go. Pretty much this face plate is ready to go and, um, and wired in, like I said, uh, to to some of the other components that need it. All right, let's take a moment and review where we are. When I first started, my office was nice and clean. And you'll notice that that isn't true anymore. And this often happens during a project as I scramble around looking for bits and parts and tools. Uh, my office usually looks like a hurricane hit it when I'm done. But again, let's see where we are. I've got the faceplate stuffed. I have one of my sub uh, components built. And here's where we're at with regards to the circuit board. Or I should say point to point uh, copper monstrosity. And by the way, uh, you know, in case you're thinking that this just looks like um, just a bag of wires, 
let me show you something. This is a 40 watt amplifier manufactured sometime during the late 60s, uh, early 70s, I'm, I'm not certain. Better hope nothing bad happens uh, because uh, equipment like this uh, wasn't grounded back then. Uh, it would have been grounded internally, a floating ground. I want you to look at how this thing was manufactured. Have a look inside here. Uh, back at this time, uh, this type of manufacturing would have been done in Ohio, Michigan, uh, perhaps even New Jersey. And this type of manufacturing was basically considered women's work. Uh, women uh, most likely built this item. But, but you'll notice that there's really no circuit board inside. They use some of the same types of standoffs uh, that I use. Um, so that they can mount a couple items, but everything else is uh, point to point. And what made this really interesting, uh, uh, for me anyways, is this really is sort of a people's amplifier. If something were to break, say this old oil-filled capacitor, it could easily be snipped out and a new one put in. Uh, it really was possible for people to work on and maintain their equipment. I guess with the addition of the, uh, the cable that's going to carry the signal to the meter, the faceplate looks to be, at this point, pretty much wired up, minus um, I still have to uh, put in the phantom power and my impedance selector, but those are currently wired um, to other things with inside the box, so let's get busy. Again, as I speed along and we listen to me on a different setting, let's take a look at the DI in this box. So I've got a couple quick samples that I recorded, all unprocessed, of course, um, some bass guitar, some clean guitar, and uh, some guitar through uh, a very old Line 6 uh, software plugin. Let's start with some bass. I'm not going to win any Grammys for that, but I would like to say that the idea for even putting a DI uh, in these units came from Jack uh, Douglas. Let's take a look at some clean guitar. And you'll notice I'm flipping through some settings while I do it. Once again, I'm not going to get any Grammys for that, but uh, let's take a listen to how well this can work with uh, a plugin I got for free, actually. I think it came bundled with something. metal at its finest. So the only thing I did there was just change uh, how I was using the triode tube and it went from kind of crunchy to you know heavy. So we're back uh, watching me work my way through this uh, design here. You can see that I'm I'm building a, a new power supply although I am using the parts from the old power supply after I got done taking the the box apart um, the 12 volt regulator just wasn't seeing ground the, the way I wanted it to. Plus, I thought one of the later model uh, power supplies would be a little bit better for this box. But again, I kept the parts that were in the original 
and uh, you know, just uh, put in a new circuit board. And uh, again, I'd like to talk a little bit about what a little bit about the philosophy that drove Eric and I at this time. Uh, neither one of us had any background in electronics. And since that was really the only thing we had going for us, we, we leveraged the one thing that was really true, which was we didn't know a thing about electronics. And um, that meant we didn't try other uh, designs. We didn't come at things the way other designers would. We used our ears um, more than we used uh, math uh, to work our way through these designs. And um, it, it's evident in these very early um, boxes. Uh, like I said, there are, there are no existing notes. I didn't make any notes when this was built. Uh, for the first 20 or so, I didn't make any any notes at all. They're all built from memory and, and again, built in such a way that I'm, I'm, I'm actually hoping that I make a mistake. Most of the time, the mistakes I made, um, I'm going to say were tragic, but, you know, might result in, uh, in me shocking myself or the circuit not working or the circuit just sounding horrible. But every now and again, a mistake I would made or would make would just make the thing sound amazing. And about 20% of uh, what's in my current line of uh, products is uh, the result of a mistake. So here we are at the end. You can see me doing some little sweep arounds with my uh, camera phone. Uh, you get to see my desk here and uh, what it looks like inside. And for a point-to-point -point hand wired item, I, I think this thing is absolutely gorgeous and um, I'm, I'm so excited uh, to, to be returning this back to to its owner and um, hearing about uh, what he does with it so yeah this is wire porn look at it <laughs> wire, wire porn anyways uh, it's been a real pleasure um, showing this refurbishment to you and and making this and of course if you um, have any comments i'm sure wherever this is posted there is a comment section and i i hope to to hear from you and uh, if anybody else out there has uh, something that looks like this there's a before and then there's the after i'd like to hear from you as well there's another before and there's an after, so you, you kind of get an idea of uh, what we put into this. So again, thank you very much, and until next time.